In this example, we'll be looking at how we can use the two rail sweep form and all of the different options within that form to create components. We'll be looking at two particular examples. First, we'll be looking at how we can use open rails to create a shape, and then we'll also be looking at how we can use closed rails to create shapes like the one you can see here. So let's go over, go to File, Close. So we'll go and open an existing file. From the Two Rail Guides project folder, we're going to bring in openrailexample.clv3d and press Open. Okay, so you can see we've got a series of vectors that we've already created in the software. To help ourselves see the part better, we're going to use the option to tile windows vertically. That way we can see the 2D view in the left and the 3D view in the right. Now to access the Two Rail Sweep tool, we need to go into the Modeling tab and under the modeling tools it's this second option here, the two rail sweep. So let's select that and go in there. So when we create a shape using the two rail sweep tool, we need to have a minimum of three vectors. Now we need two vectors that would represent our drive rails or the shape of the part that we'd like to create. And then we need to have a vector that represents the cross section. And that's the profile that we're going to sweep through those rails. You can have one cross section or we could have a multiple of cross sections. So we're just going to create a quick shape just to show you how this works. So the first thing that I need to do is select my rails, the vectors that represent my drive rails. So I'm going to select this one here. I'm going to hold down shift and select this one here. We're going to use this option to use selection. And so the software has transformed those vectors into drive rails. There's a few things that we can see here. We can see the start points for both of those vectors. We can see that there's arrows on these rails, and that's telling us the direction. We can also see that one is red and the other is green, and that's due to the order of selection. So I selected the red one first, and then the green one is the vector that I selected second. So then what we do, once we've selected our rails, we then go on to select a cross section. So I'm just going to select this shape here. It must be an open vector in order for us to sweep that through there. So you can see we have an open vector here. And then if we work our way down the form, we'll get to all of these uh, different variations of how we can control the shape later on in the tutorial. Once we get to the bottom, we need to select how we want this component to combine with previous components that we may already have. So you can select to have that to add, to subtract, we could set it to merge high or we could set it to merge low. And it's a good idea to name your component appropriately according to what it is within the design. For this example I'm just going to call this sweep and then we can go ahead and press apply and then we can see that we have this rounded shape from our cross section here being swept through these rails where the vector rails govern the shape of our part. Okay, so let's just close down that form and we can see that that component has now been added to our component tree. We can see the grayscale in the 2D view and we can see the model there in the 3D view. And then we can treat this like any normal component. So we could take that, if we wanted to, we could move it around. We could look at rotating that or changing the shape or size of the part. And so it's important to note at this point uh, that as soon as we've closed the two rail sweep form and applied the changes, there is no longer a connection between this component and the vectors that we use to create uh, our component that we've got here. Okay, so I'm just going to take that and I'm going to delete that for the time being. So let's go and select the same rails again. So I'm going to select both of these by holding down shift and we can go into the two rail sweep form. I'll just pop this in the Z view there. We're going to say use selection and then again I'm going to apply the same cross section so I'll select this vector here. I'm just going to switch off this option to scale cross sections with width and just press apply. And so if we take a look at the part in the 3D view, we can see that the software is maintaining the height all the way throughout the part. 
Now if we use this option to scale the cross sections with the width, we'll check that and then we'll press apply. And what that does, it will scale the cross section against the width between our two rails. So where we can see the rails are further apart, like in this instance here and this side here, we can see that there's a lot more height in our component. Now where our rails become narrower and become closer to each other, we can see that there is less height in the part and so we're creating this nice organic shape. So it's good to use this option if you are working with organic models. We then have another two options here. We have sweep between spans and fill centre of inner closed vector rails and we'll get to those later on in the tutorial. And then we have this option here to scale to an exact height. So at the moment the software is currently setting the height based on the distance between the two vector rails and the cross section that we have selected. Now if I use this option and then scale that to say 0 and enter that in, if I press apply there, we can see that we have a flat shape. Now if I scale that up to say half an inch and press apply, you can see at the highest point of our component is going to be scaled up to half an inch. So if I did that up to two inches, for instance, if we apply that, we can see again, if I hover over the top, that the highest point is going to be at two inches. And then if I just uncheck that and apply that, the software will just find its natural height. Another option we could do here is use the reset option. So if I select that, that's just going to reset the model and you can still see that in the 2D view uh, the rails and the cross sections are still selected uh, but now we have the options to alter the settings or choose different cross sections. If I wanted to I could use this option here to clear rails and we can see that the only vector that we have selected is our cross section here as if we were in normal selection mode. If I wanted to, I could go and reselect them and then apply a new cross section. So we'll go and select these and say use selection and then I could go and select my cross section. We have already looked at how we can use one cross section within a two rail sweep. Next we're going to look at how we can apply multiple cross sections to our rails. So for this we're going to select this cross section again and this time rather than using the option use selection I'm actually going to apply that to the node and we can see that I have a check on my cursor so it's telling me that I'm okay to go ahead and apply this. So I'm going to click and we can see that that has been applied from the start point and we can see how the flow of that shape is going to go through those rails we can see where it finishes at the end. You'll also notice that we have these red indicators and it matches the same colour as the red indicator on our cross section. So this is telling me which way this cross section is going to be hung through those rails. So this node is going to match this node here which will flow from left to the right to our end point here. And so if we just apply that just to see how that looks so far. Okay, so you can see we've just got that round shape going from left to right and then if I wanted to I could go and select another cross section and all I'd have to do is select my cross section and then I'm going to apply that to the end here. So I'm just going to override this round shape at the end, click, we can see it's now been changed to a yellow node. We can see that there's a yellow indicator on our cross section here and so this indicator is telling me that the shape is going to be hung from this point here and this point here. And so if we applied that, we can see that we have this transition of the round shape coming through and then it's gradually going to turn into that triangular shape at the end. If we pop that back in Z, and if I wanted to, I could apply a further cross section to the middle of our shape. And to do that, I'm going to go and select this vector here and just apply that anywhere around here. We can see that there's that check again next to my cursor so it's telling me that I'm okay to apply that here so I'm going to click. We can see that that's been applied in place there. We can see it's indicated by this green node here and we can see that green node here on this cross section and so it's going to be hung from this point here on this rail here. And so if we apply that 
And so we can see how that shape is rounded at the start and then it transitions into this ridge shape here and then it transitions off into that triangular shape here. And so the order that the shapes will sweep is purely based on how the software finds them as it sweeps along the rails. Now not only do we have various options within our form to control the shape of our part, we also have the option to use the right mouse button. If I hover over this rail and press the right mouse button, we can see that I have a list of various options here and we'll look at those shortly. I can also hover over a node and you can see that I have a different set of options here. You'll notice that I do have an option here to delete a cross section and so if I apply that we can see in the 2D view that that cross section is no longer there. And so if I apply that it's no longer part of the shape that we calculated. As mentioned before, we can always pick a cross section and replace it with another vector without having to go and delete it. At the moment we can see we've got that round shape and then it's transitioning into that triangular shape at the end. If I wanted to, I could change the triangular shape to be this shape here. So with that vector selected, I'm going to apply that to this uh, node here. We can see that it's now changed to this cross section. And so if we apply that, we can see that that change has been made. Another thing that we can do whilst in the two rail sweep form is alter the shape of our rails or our cross sections without actually having to come out of the form. To do this I'm just going to press reset. As you can see we've removed that model however we can still see in the 2D view that it's retained the information of our selection where we've got our round one uh, at the start here and then we have our ridged shape at the end there. Now, if I wanted to I could click into the 2D view and then press N on the keyboard and let's put that into node edit mode where I can go ahead and then look at altering the shape that we have here. Okay, so you can see I'm just pulling on the handles, just changing the way that our shape looks. I could select the other one here. If I wanted to I could insert a new point by going into the right menu and then use the option to insert a point or I could press I on the keyboard. That's the shortcut key for that. And I could just look at altering the shape of this vector. I could then go into here, select these nodes and just move them up. We can see that we've got different shapes here. So now I can come out of node edit mode by right mouse clicking and I'm going to use the option to reselect the rails. And so the software will remember the vectors that it had selected before in terms of its rails and cross sections. And so if we apply that we can see that it's created this new shape based on the vectors that we edited here. I'm going to take the triangular shape and I'm going to select that and I'd like to apply that to the middle there. And another thing that we can do with our cross sections is move their endpoints around once they've been inserted. So for instance with this one here I'm just going to drag that over here and I'm going to pull over on this one here. I could do the same to the ends of our uh, rails if I wanted to so I could put this cross section point all the way over to this side here and then if we apply that so the software's took that information and it's still going to sweep between our two rails and we can see that these lines give us a fairly good indication of how the shapes are going to flow between those rails and even though we're not going all the way up to the end of our rail or our vector here the shape that we're creating is still stopping between the last two points uh, that define the position of my cross section. And so there is a lot of options for us to control the shape of our part within the form and by looking at altering the vectors and the points of our cross sections and how we can move those around. And so once we're happy with that, we'd then go ahead and say, give that a name, we'll call that sweep. If I wanted to, I could press apply. If I wanted to go and create another two rail sweep, I could just use this option here to start a new component.
And so we'll go ahead and select our new rails. So I'm going to shift and select these two. We'll say use selection. I'm going to go and select my cross section. We'll call this one sweep two. And then we can press apply. Okay. Then we can go and close that down. I can see both of my shapes within our component tree there. So let's just go and delete both of those. So let's have a look at some more options within the two rail sweep form. So we'll go back in there. So I'm going to go and select my vectors for my rails. So I'm going to select this one first, hold down shift, select this one second. We'll say use selection. And I'm going to go and apply my cross section, which is this one here. I'm just going to uncheck scale cross sections with width for the time being. We'll call this one sweep and then we'll just apply that. Okay, so you can see how that looks. Now if I just click in the 2D view and actually click on the node just so we can see how the shape is working. So we can see we've got our red indicators on the top of our rail there and then we have our red indicator here. So we can see how the shape of this cross section is being hung along the top rail. Okay, so you can see that there. If I wanted to, I could alter the shape of this so that it's opposite, so that we have the bottom of our cross section here being hung from the bottom instead. Now I could go in, clear the rails and then reselect them by selecting the bottom rail first, then selecting this rail second, or I could use the option to right mouse click on the rails and use this option to swap rail order. Okay, we can see now that the red nodes are at the bottom and then we have our green rail at the top. So when I apply that, we can see that it's swapped the order of those rails. And then if I wanted to, I could go and do that again. So I could change that back. So I'll right mouse click, say swap rail order, so that the bottom of our cross section, this area here, is going to be at the top of our shape up here. So if we apply that, and we can see that change has been made there. So let's take a look at the other options within the right mouse menu when we hover over our rails. We can see we have the option to reverse a rail. And now you'd use this if your arrows weren't going in the same direction. So as an example, I'm just going to reverse the top rail here so we can see how that would look. So we can see our top rail is going from right to left. You can see those arrows are going in the left hand direction. And then our rail at the bottom is going from left to right. And we can see those arrows are all pointing right. And so what's happening is the cross section is sweeping from the right hand side and the top and the left hand side and the bottom. And so we're getting this twisted effect in the middle. We can see that representative of those lines in the 2D view. Let's just apply that just to see how that looks. And we can see that that's not really a useful shape. And so this may happen when you initially create your two rail sweep, as it's all dependent on where the start point is uh, within your vector setup for your rails. And so if you do get a result like this, then you should just go and right mouse click and use the option to reverse the rail. And your 2D view tells you a lot. It's a good indicator of whether it's going in the right direction or not, as we can judge that by the arrows within our rails. And we can also judge that on the lines of how that cross section is going to sweep between those two rails. So now we've changed that back. Let's apply that. You can see that we have this option to sweep between spans. And this option can be used if we're applying more than one cross section to our rails. And it will only work if each one of our cross sections has the same number of spans in the vector. And so what it does, it will sweep between each of those spans in order for you to control the shape. Let's just reset that shape. I'm going to click in the white space and then press N on the keyboard to go into node edit mode. Okay, so you can see we have two spans in this cross section here. So we've got a node, we have a span going from node to node, and then we have another span going from node to node here. So we can see that this vector has two spans in there. If we take a look at this cross section here, we can also see we have two spans here. We have our node, our vector going between 
two nodes here and then we have a vector going between these nodes here. So if we go and reselect our rails, what I'd like to do is apply this round profile to the centre here. Okay, so we're going to have the triangular shape going into the rounded shape, going back out into the triangular shape. We'll ensure that sweep between spans is selected and then if we hit apply we can see in the 3D view where this span on our triangle is sweeping into the span of this side of our curved shape here and then it's going back out to this span here and the same for the other side as well. And Now if we just uncheck that and then press apply there we can see that all the software is doing now is taking those cross sections and transitioning them linearly through the rails without worrying about those spans. So if we check that back again and press apply so we can see the difference there and how they're transitioning through the spans of each of those cross sections. And now this only works if it has the same number of spans between each cross section. And so if I selected this cross section here, where we can clearly see that there is more than two spans in this vector, and if I applied that to the end point here, we can see that all of these red numbers have appeared below our cross sections. And those numbers are indicating how many spans are within that cross section. And now if these don't match, the software is telling me that it doesn't matter if the sweep option is checked or not, as it doesn't have the ability to sweep between the different number of spans. And so if we press apply in this case, it will just sweep that linearly. And so if we can see the numbers below the cross sections, then the software will ignore the ability to sweep between spans. If we can't see the numbers under the cross sections, then you will be able to use the sweep between spans option. So now we're going to look at how the software controls how the shape flows through each of the cross sections. So let's just use the option to reset that. We're going to clear the rails. I'm going to select my rails again by holding down shift and selecting those we'll say use selection I'm going to apply this curve shape to the end points of each of my rails and then I'd like to have this triangular shape running through the middle there I'm going to press apply and if I take a look at this down the y-axis we can see that the shape is going in a wave or a bell curve here and it's got quite a smooth transition from the rounded shape going up to that triangular shape and then it's coming down and smoothly blending into that rounded shape again. Now I have the ability to control the smoothness of these transitions uh, by right clicking on these nodes here. So if I right click here we can see that smooth is checked. Now if I select that so it's unchecked and then apply that we can see now we have a straight transition and then it's going to, up to the top and transitioning into a smooth shape and then it's coming down and followed by a smooth shape at the end there. Again I could come over to this central node here right mouse click use the smooth option to uncheck that and apply that and we can see there we have a straight shape going up into a straight shape and it's coming down from that straight transition into the smooth transition at the bottom there and again I can go and right mouse click and uncheck the smooth option for the last node press apply and we can see how we have a straight going into a straight going back down into the straight here so we're having that straight transition throughout all of those cross sections and we can go back in there and change them back to smooth so I'll go smooth there and then we'll apply that and then we can go onto this node here right mouse click smooth that and apply that to that cross section and then we'll right mouse click on this node here smooth that and apply that smooth to that cross section there and you can see that the difference is quite subtle but it's just another way for us to control the shape Okay, so let's just close that down and let's have a look at another example. 
So I'm actually going to close this file down, so I'll say File, Close, I don't want to save that. And I'm going to go and open another file from the same project folder. I'm going to open the closed rail example and then press Open. We're going to have a look at some other features uh, within the two rail sweep form. And so the examples that we have just looked at both use rails that have open vectors. Now we're going to look at some examples that use closed vector rails. And so we're going to use this vector that you can see here. And I'm going to look at offsetting that outwards in order for us to create another rail that we're going to model from. So with that vector selected, let's go over to the offset selected vectors. We're going to offset that outwards. I'm going to offset that by one inch. And then I'm just going to have this option checked to create sharp offset corners. And then we can go and offset that out. Okay, so you can see we have our second vector there. So let's just close that form and then we'll go and tile the window so we can see the 2D view and the 3D view. So let's go into the white space to deselect that vector. We'll go into the modeling tab. I'm going to use the option to create a two rail sweep. So I'm going to go and select my rails first. So I'll hold down shift and select these two. Say use selection. And then we can go and select my cross section. And then we can apply that to my node there. You can see straight away that we have a lot of visual clues as to the problems that I'm going to have with this shape if I went ahead and pressed apply here. We can see that our cross section is being stretched from start point on the outer rail to the start point on the inner rail here. And it's very important that when we're working with closed rails that the start points are in coincident positions at least relative to each other on the rails. And so now we could go out and adjust the vector by going into the node edit mode to change the start point or I could just hover over this corner here, right mouse click and then use this option here to make the start point. And then we can go and apply that cross section there. We can still see by this visual information in the 2D view that we have lines all over the place here. And if we look closely, we can see the reason for that is that our outer rail is traveling in a clockwise direction, whereas our inner rail is traveling in the anti-clockwise direction. And so what we need to do is make the direction the same in both rails. So we'll just hover over our inner rail here, right mouse click, and use the option to reverse rail. We can see straight away that that looks a lot better there. And so then we'd go and call this one frame and then we'll go and press apply there. We can see how that looks in the 3D view. So we can see in the 3D view we have some rather strange effects going on here. Where it looks as though the cross section is being twisted as it gets to these corners. And the reason for that is the cross section is traveling between the two rails and you can imagine it being like two race cars going round a track. They have to start and finish at exactly the same time. And to do that, the outside car needs to go a lot faster in order for it to stay in line with the car on the inside track because the outer track is a lot bigger than the one in the middle. And so what's happening is the shape is becoming out of sync as it's being swept around. And so we can help ourselves by positioning more copies of our cross sections at each of those corners. Luckily, we deliberately designed this so that the inner and the outer vectors have the same number of spans or, or the same number of nodes. And so because of that, we can use this option, if we right mouse click and use this option here to add to all rail nodes, we can see it's automatically added those to each of those pair of nodes. Then we can go and press apply there. And so we can see we have a nice mitered effect in those corners there now. Now unless you designed your vectors so that they have the same number of nodes, then there is a reasonable chance that you would not be able to use the add to all rail nodes option. So let's give you an example of how we can add those nice corners manually if you didn't have the same number. So we're just going to close this down and I'm going to select that frame and we're just going to right mouse click and I'm going to delete it. I'm going to select my outer node here 
and then we're going to go into node edit mode so let's go into node edit and I'm going to look at inserting in some extra points here so I'm going to right mouse click insert a point or I could use I on the keyboard and I'll do that again so you can see I have three extra nodes added to our outer vector there so let's go back into normal selection mode with that selected let's hold down shift and select the inner vector let's go back into the two rail sweep form we're going to use the option to use selection then I'm going to select my cross section here and apply that like so and then if I applied that see how that looks and if we right mouse click we can see that that option to add to all rail nodes is greyed out we can't use that because we added in those extra nodes and it will only work if we have the same number of nodes between each vector rails and so we'd have to go in and manually insert the cross section at all of those corners so to go to our cross section then I can add that in there and then if I just zoom in and make sure that that's corresponding to the corner so all we do is move that over we can see now that's corresponding to that corner the same corner that we've got selected on the outside if I just press F to fit that to screen I'm going to go and apply that to this side here again let's just snap to that corner there and then click and insert a node there and then just snap over here same on this side let's click in there and then snap that to the corner and then click here and then snap that over there so now if we press apply we can see that we've added those nice mitered corners there and that's because we went round and manually input all of those cross sections at each of those corners so I'll go ahead and we'll call that frame and then press apply and then we can go and close that form down. Now if we take a look at that in the 3D view and just tilt that, it doesn't look too bad. However, now that I've tilted that, it doesn't have the vertical edge that I expected to have on the end. And so it's quite a small shape. If we take a look at that vector, we can see the size. If you look in this area here, it's telling me that that vector is 1 inch wide by 0.5 inches high. Now if I select that component, and we're going to the pro properties there, we can see that it's only 0.126 inches high. And so the reason for that is if we just take a closer look at our vector here by zooming in there, we can see... So we're actually missing a piece of key information here. If I wanted to create that vertical height, then I need to have another vector uh, within this shape or a span in here. And so what the software is actually doing, it's reading this shape as though the end point of our cross section here will be attached to one rail and the end point of our cross section here will be attached to the other rail. So the actual 3D shape that we're actually going to get or the actual cross section that we're going to see is this shape here as though it was sat flat on the modelling plane. And so we actually want a leg in there that would represent the vertical height. And so when we draw cross sections, draw them to the shape that you'd like to see if you were to cut through the material. So I'm going to take this vector here and we're going to use this to create our leg. So we're going to go into node edit mode, I'm going to select this node here, hold down shift and select this node here, then I'm going to go and press X on the keyboard to align those in the X values. I'm going to go and come into normal selection mode. We can see we have two open vectors there. So I'm going to hold down shift and select the other vector. I'm going to go into the drawing tab and then we're just going to go and join those. So now we have one open vector and this open area at the bottom will be the bottom of our shape that we're going to create. Let's go into the modeling tab. I'm just going to select the frame, right mouse click and we're just going to delete that component there. And let's go and zoom to fit. To help myself, I'm just going to select this vector here, go into node edit mode, and I'm going to hover over these and delete the extra points that we created earlier. So we don't need those in there anymore. And then I'm going to go and go back into normal selection mode. I'm going to go and select both of those vectors. We'll go into the two rail sweep option to say use selection. I'm going to apply that here let's right mouse click and add that to all of those pairs of rail nodes there 
Let's go and call this one frame and then press apply. Okay, and we can see that has taken shape there. And we can see that that vertical edge is being added to the outside rail there. What I'd like to do is swap that rail order. So I'm going to right mouse click, use the option to swap rail order and then press apply. Okay, so you can see now that we have the vertical height on the inside there. Okay, so I'm happy with that. There's one more thing that we can do within the two rail sweep form and that's this option here to fill center of inner closed vector rails. And so whatever the height is on the inner edge, it will fill that space with that height. So let's apply that, and then we can press apply. We can see how that is filling that out. So if we go ahead and close that and just maximize the 3D view, we can take a look at that down the ISO view. We can see how easily and quickly we created this plaque. And so we could go ahead. So that completes this tutorial of how to use the two rail sweep tool. We looked at various options within the two rail sweep form in order for us to take control of the shape that we're wanting to create. Not only did we look at options within the form, but we looked at how we could use the right mouse options to further control the shape. Now there are lots of examples of how we can use the two rail sweep in actual projects throughout the tutorials where we look at how we can use this tool to create organic and geometric shapes. And so that concludes this tutorial.